Steelhead Heaven, pretty catchy name, isn't it? Well, Tracy Hiddle of Steelhead Heaven has invited us up to Kitimat here to do a little steelheading for the next two and a half days. Of course, it's going to be condensed down to 30 minutes in this television show. We're going to be fishing the Kitimat River. We're also going to be doing a day trip on the Kalem, which is classified water. Remember, there's a lot of very special regulations around steelhead fishing in British Columbia. One of the new regulations on all moving waters, whether steelhead or not, is single barbless hooks. Make sure you pinch those barbs down. Steelheading on the Kitimat and Kalem. That's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. <music> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by G. Loomis and by Islander Reels and by Outcast. and you know you're either going to go and have a real good day or you're going to go and get punished. What is the mystique about steelheading? Why do people like to do it? Well I guess it's when you have an opportunity to catch a rainbow trout that is potential to be 40 pounds. They get That's, up that big 40 pounds. Yeah, you know, they're uh, an ocean running rainbow trout and I guess the color of them is what really draws anglers here and also the serenity of the the fly fishing atmosphere it's uh, just something it's just something in the air that's just awesome okay. yeah and I think that again goes along with the mystique you know steelheading you're gonna catch something real big on a fly rod which is what the fly fisherman really strives for a lot of guys go out they, they like the small fish but steelhead if you want big get a steelhead that's right the other thing too we've noticed me and Grant just arrived we're fishing the Kitimat today we're doing the Kalem tomorrow and the weather's really weird it's like it's getting really warm. The water has really come up on us. Think that's going to affect us at all? Um, well, with the higher water condition, it makes it a little more difficult to swing flies because you're going to be throwing a lot of those flies over the fish's head instead of right down where we want to be. So we'll probably have to use uh, sink tips, a little okay. extra weight down there. And uh, a lot of the fish have a lot more room to disperse instead of holding these nice riffles and pools that we're used to fishing. So the high water is going to make it difficult. Well, we've got different techniques to use again. We've got some heavy rods, eight weights. We're going to maybe try some egg patterns. We're definitely going to be swinging some flies. Just have to pound it hard and see, as usual, right? Fish of a thousand casts? A fish of a thousand casts, <laughs> maybe more for some. Yeah. Excellent. I think we're ready to move on to the next spot. That's pretty good. That's pretty hard. You know, one thing you got to be careful of when you're out in the wild like this is watching for wildlife. And we saw some pretty fresh grizzly tracks this morning too. So you can kind of have one ear open to the bush and half an eye over your shoulder as well. Don't go away. We're going to head downstream. Try the next hole. We'll be right back.
that fly to be able to swing down through the current and draw your line through there. Right now, it's just not quite doing that. Getting a bit of a belly in the line, and that's never good. You want to be able to follow the, follow the fly with the rod tip and have a real nice swing. This up here, not really good swing in water, but down below here looks a little better. So keep working our way down, seeing if we get into better swing in water. All right, we made it down to the, to the tail out of the run. Now you can see my fly's getting a good drift through there. Just lying to cast and it's actually swinging my fly through the current and really not bringing it back much on the back eddy. Just a little bit, just a slight eddy here. But at least my fly is getting a good swing now. So we'll try that again. I just kind of cast downstream a little bit, mend my line in the slack water to let the fly get down and then proceed to let the fly swing through. And all you do is wait and hang on. Well, when you're fishing for a steelhead, you know a lot of times there's other species in the water here, and I just happen to get a nice little dolly. And you do get a lot of dollies. They have dollies in here and native cuts. And here he is here, nice little fish. And again, they do eat the same, the same feed as the big steelhead. Very nice little dolly. There's the egg sucking leech right in the corner of his lip. There he is, that's a nice little dolly. Let him go again. And there he goes. And that's some of the, some of the added bonus you get when you're steelhead. And if the steelhead aren't biting, well, you can also go up to the dolly or the trout, as we call them. Well, here comes steelhead. One of the most important pieces of equipment you can bring is your line. We're actually on the Kitimat River on the day one. This is day three of steelheading, and it's probably gone down two feet. So the 200 grain line that I was using on day one now is hanging up in the first run we got to. So I switched it up, and I've got about a tight four on right now. It's just nice having the ability to be able to switch whatever's going to suit your needs because you know when you're fishing for these things you got to maximize your chances with every cast because you're going to take a lot of casts or you could hit that one magical day where you catch a few steelies I'm getting ready for a steelhead trip and I'm tying up some of my favorite steelhead patterns. The two main colors I love to use, purples and pinks. Very, very effective patterns for steelhead and today I'm going to tie you up one of these little pink ones and it's called the pink brat. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook we're going to use a size 4 Mustad C70SD. We use some 3 aught red thread to tie with. We use a pink plastic bead as a bead. For the eyes, we'll use some 632nd silver dumbbell eyes, some hot pink marabou for the tail, and some hot pink seal fur for the body. To start the fly off, I've put my bead onto the hook and moved it up to the eyelet. Now I've taken my 3 out red thread, and I'm just going to start it onto the hook. Once I have my thread onto the hook, I'm going to keep my thread close to where I put the bead on and then I'm going to take some silver dumbbell eyes and just tie them in and make sure you do a lot of figure eights around these dumbbell eyes make sure they're even on the hook and do enough figure eights where your eyes aren't going to rotate so they're in there nice and sturdy 
Move your thread to the back of the hook and take some hot pink marabou. And what I'm going to do is actually pull the fibers down on my marabou and pull off the tip. I don't want any of the tips on when I tie in the tail because it actually stops it from moving properly in the water. Then we're going to pull it back, measure it up about the length of the hook or a little bit longer and tie in the marabou for the tail. For the next step there's two ways of doing this. I have my hot pink seal fur. What we can actually do is form a dubbing brush on the hot pink seal fur but I actually like to just dub it onto my line, my, my thread and roll it up. And this way when I pick out the dubbing a little later it's going to pick out very nicely. So what I'm going to do is just single line dub on my seal fur and once I have quite a bit onto my thread I'm going to wrap it up to form the body. Now as I'm wrapping up the body I'm just going to go back and forth over the seal and keep adding as much as I need. And what I want to do is just taper the body up towards the head. And we want it fairly thin at the tail and a little more tapered around the eyes. And you want to make sure you get all this dubbing around the eyes. So we'll just keep dubbing on and wrapping it up and wrap around the eyes and keep it fairly thick. And finish off right behind the bead. And after we whip finish, I'm going to snip off my thread and I'm actually going to take a dubbing picker and just pick out that dubbing and pick it out quite quite a bit and we're going to pull this back and that's just going to form a real nice bushy body on the fly and there it is the finished pink brat you know how I like to work this pattern is always follow through after I've worked the hole what I'll do is put on one of my purple egg sucking leeches or one of my favorite other patterns and if I don't have any luck I quickly put on the pink brat and can usually hook a fish Let's go the other side of the boat here. Just missed a couple of acrobatic oh. jumps too. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Got into prime time. Wow. Unbelievable. The Kalem River. And uh, you know steelheading, I tell you, we call it the last time the fish of a thousand casts. Well it's been a thousand casts. We've had a couple of tough days. And now maybe they're finally gonna turn on here a little bit. Beautiful fish. And the technique again we're using is just, and the key I think to any success we're having here today is getting that fly down to where the fish are at. <laughs> wow, that's an eight weight rod, folks. Holy. And that, uh, that is cranked down there. Wow, oh, you know, it's an, like I said, it's an eight weight rod we got. Let's go quickly through the setup that I'm using here today. We've got a 200 grain sink tip on a VersaTip system. And the 200 grain, it's actually, Don's cut it back, it was a 15 foot and Don's cut it back to about 12 feet. And then from there I put on some 15 pound monofilament for about a foot. And then onto that I've got about two and a half to three feet of 12 pound fluorocarbon. And the end of that, if we ever get a chance to see this here, you'll see the, uh, the purple egg sucking leech that I've put on and it's very heavily weighted. Don tied them up last night. We're actually staying at Tracy's house and after the hockey game we went there and uh, he's not quite ready yet. I tied up a couple of flies including this one right here. You know it's kind of fun. We were able to come up here to kit him at. We're staying with Tracy. There's actually a couple of the guys fishing with us who are here from here from California. And you know of course we have a a semiconductor company on the side and go figure that these guys from California one of them's into semiconductors so we not only got to talk lots of fishing we got to talk semiconductors as well see this guy's ready to come in here beauty holy cow not, not yet are we ready yet well, I wish I could help you, but I can't. Yeah, I wish you could help me too. And of course, like we mentioned, we got the guys from California here, so we got the two boats. 
we just happened to kind of move on ahead and the type of water that we've been trying to fish today has been just a little bit deeper pockets and that's where we picked this guy up. Yeah. Oh, that's a real pretty fish though. Very oh, nice yeah. fish. <laughs> Not quite ready. Yeah, they got so much power. Gonna wrap it around here. There we go. Oh, oh yeah, nice fish, Granny. That's a beauty. <laughs> oh, right yeah. on, eh? look at that. That's awesome. A, that's what steelheading's all about, isn't it? <laughs> that. Right there. Get this guy unwrapped here. Her gal. Yeah, you can hold them up again for everybody and just and, uh, unbutton the leech. There's the the leech. Oh, oh yeah. Yet. Oh, yet. That's how fresh they are. Look at how silver that fish is. She just wants to go. Get the line cleared. Oh yeah, are we ready there? Oh yeah, Woo. look at that. That's hey. a dandy. Isn't that sweet? Oh beautiful fish. <laughs> Wow, about, I don't know, I'm not good at weight, but it's probably in the eight pound range. And there it goes, very fresh, whole oh, cold water. Excellent. Well, hey, it took a day and a half. Yesterday, we were actually over in the Kitimat River. Fished it hard all day, and for some reason, it's really tough. So we came up to the Kalem today, and it's taken till now. It's clouded over. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. We got about five hours of uh, floating left, so hopefully that's a good sign that these guys are ready to I don't know, have some fun with this, I guess. Let me just show you this purple egg sucking leech. See, it's got a, a purple chenille body. Don wrapped it with a black hackle. Got the uh, purple marabou tail. And then just the, the egg on the front end. Barbless, of course, you're fishing steelhead. You gotta make sure you have barbless hooks. The other thing about the Kalem River, this is classified water, so we had to buy a special license just to fish on the Kalem today. Get fish like that, it's definitely worth it. Right on. Technology today, we want to talk about the state of the steelhead industry. You know, we don't like dating our shows, but it's the spring of 2004. It was only a couple years ago when there were some issues with the steelhead industry. We have those same issues again because the Gold River, you were heading down there to fish yep. it, and there weren't any fish in the oh, Gold River. It's getting worse than ever. You know, I got a report, I was going to head down the Gold, do some fishing with Morgan McLean at Top Guys. They counted 33 fish in the river, and normally at this time of year, they're counting 3,000. So I went on the Fish BC forum, which is one of the main forums to talk about fishing, and I read this report. And they said in the last count, they counted 35 steelhead and they were supposed to have 900 in the system. So it is getting decimated and it seems like it's all through the coast now. All the wild stocks seem to be getting hit hard and they don't know why. Yeah, that's a very interesting question, far beyond the scope of what we're going to be able to talk about today, but yeah. the hatchery fish seem to be okay right now. Uh, the hatcheries like the Stamp, uh, yeah. the Cowichan, those kind of streams have been doing very well in their hatcheries. And now there's a whole big debate on, well, they, should they make hatcheries on the Stamp? Should they make hatcheries on Goldstream? You know, they're, they're not seeing fish there. So that's the big debate. What's caused it? The logging? You know, a lot of people are blaming logging. Who knows, There's right? So many different factors that come into play. Like, exactly. You know, it's interesting, and I know what they do down in the States, they just try and keep the wild strain of the species in the area. They don't like to introduce native or any other species exactly. into a stream, and that's, you know, it comes back to the gold. Should they introduce hatchery fish in the gold? Like, yeah, you know, big you, issues. You got the number one or the, the best wild steelhead fishery river in North yeah. America, right? Well, I'm just wondering if it's gonna hurt any other, any other industries. Like, I mean, the Skeena system, still probably very good up there but again the wild stocks are hurting you know now they're even having people that are introducing more salmon into the systems and even taking salmon from other systems to put them in for nutrient base in some rivers that are very sterile that just right. don't have that nutrients to come back and i think that's fairly smart but you don't want to mix things up too much it's like the atlantic salmon you put them in you don't know what they're doing <laughs> yeah you think you do but reality start, sets in that's right you start playing with mother nature she gets a little upset cause you some grief. I think the best thing to do when stuff like this happens is just hurry up and wait. You know, like, let's not panic. 
take your time and see what happens with the whole industry, you yeah. know, with the whole fishery and whatnot. And put some resources to it. I think if fisheries can put some money and some resources to it, let's figure out what's going on and make the steelhead come back. Get a better understanding. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. of a thousand casts. Well, I figured I took about 4,000, maybe touched a couple, but it was pretty tough. Pretty tough fishing. Yeah, it was tough fishing. Um, the water conditions came up with the sunny weather. We've been having, you know, average and to above normal temperatures in uh, this part of the season. And uh, it made for high water. The runoffs were definitely a factor for us. And uh, those nice fishy runs were just covered with fast water today. Yeah, you know, even the, even the guys with the gooey bobs, you know, there's, there's fish out there. There's always fish around. And they were even having trouble with the, with the big egg patterns and stuff like that. For sure. Big egg sacks. Egg sacks, yes. It's tough. The water comes up. But you know, it's such a great system. You know, it's a beautiful yeah. float. If you come here, we've got the Kinemat, the Kalem. We're all nice floats. A lot of fish around. We just hit it at a tough time. We hit it at a tough time, yeah. With um, the drop in uh, temperature coming supposed to this week, it's probably going to make for some better conditions. Yeah, you'll probably give us a call and say, oh, you should have seen the week after. Yeah, exactly. Say. It's but always hey, uh, thanks yeah, a lot. nice having you guys. Excellent. That was very uh, enjoyable. Excellent. I want to thank after. the boys. We also had uh, a couple of guys from California, Thurman and Ed. Had a great time. We got yeah. Thurman into a nice fish that everybody yeah. saw. Yeah, he landed a really nice steelhead, a uh, 12 pounder. Yeah. Nice big red buck, uh, beautiful colors on him. Typical for this northern atmosphere, uh, these are all ocean running fresh fish, uh, a lot of spawning right now going yep. on, so it's, the activity is just increasing. That's good, and it's not, uh, you know, it's not always as tough, we just happen to hit the tough water conditions, but yeah. when you come out here, make sure you take care, because it is big water, again, you get on the Kinemat, you get on the two great rivers. See you next time, we take sport fishing on the fly. Thanks again. Yeah, that was good. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by G. Loomis and by Islander Reels and by Superfly.